Hello, this is Vivian Chu. I will be talking about infective endocarditis. This is the module on pathophysiology and predisposing factors. The learning objectives of this module are to define the disease known as infective endocarditis, to review the pathophysiology of infective endocarditis, to examine the histopathology of infective endocarditis, to understand the classification of infective endocarditis as subacute versus acute presentation. And finally, to identify the factors that predispose patients to infective endocarditis. The term infective endocarditis refers to infection of the endocardial surface of the heart. The diagram on the right shows the layers of the heart, starting from the outermost pericardium in which the cells are pictured in purple, to the epicardium, myocardium, and finally, the endocardium, which is the innermost layer of the heart. This infection is due to microorganisms, usually bacteria, but uncommonly fungi and rarely viruses. Heart valves are the endocardial structure most commonly affected. Pictured here is a heart valve you can see the smooth structure of the normal portion of the heart valve in contrast to the irregular clumping of the infection. The pathogenesis of infective endocarditis begins with alteration of the surface of the endocardium. Examples include abnormalities due to congenital heart disease, damage produced by foreign particles such as in the case of injection drug use, and damage secondary to wear and tear such as with degenerative valve disease. These alterations on the surface of the endocardium result in the deposition of platelets, fibrin, and other matrix, matrix materials to form the sterile complex called the non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis. Transient bacteremia occurs when a mucosal surface that is heavily colonized with bacteria is traumatized, as occurs with dental, GI, urologic, and other invasive procedures. These bacteria that enter the bloodstream adhere to the non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis, or thrombus, and lead to vegetative growth, and eventually the infection that we know of as infective endocarditis. The development of infective endocarditis is highly dependent on the microorganism's ability to adhere to the non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis, or basically thrombus lesions. For example, staphylococci and enterococci adhere much more readily to cardiac valves than gram-negative rods such as E. coli. And therefore, staph and enterococci are much more common causes of infective endocarditis. Under the microscope, the vegetation or lesion on the heart valve leaflet typically shows fibrin, platelets, inflammatory cells, and masses of bacteria. There may be destruction of the heart valve, such as perforation of the leaflet or rupture of the chordae tendini. There may also be an abscess on the valve or other cardiac structures. Pictured here is a section of a heart valve with clumping of platelets, fibrin, inflammatory cells, and bacteria seen as a dense, dark, purple spot in the middle of the heart valve, along with the regular connective tissue at the bottom seen as this smooth pink surface. There are two classic forms of presentation of infective endocarditis, subacute and acute. Subacute infective endocarditis typically occurs in patients with prior heart valve damage and has a slowly progressive indolent course with symptoms such as low-grade fevers, or even no fever at all, and nonspecific symptoms such as weight loss, myalgias, and fatigue. Subacute infective endocarditis is classically due to viridan streptococci. Viridan streptococci normally colonize the oral cavity and other parts of the, of the GI tract, such as the intestines. These bacteria can escape into the bloodstream and latch onto damaged heart valves to cause subacute infective endocarditis. On the other hand, acute infective endocarditis has a dramatic presentation where patients present with high fever and have rapid onset of systemic toxicity, such as low blood pressure, organ failure, and dissemination of infection to organs other than the heart, such as the lungs, liver, 
spleen, and peripheral skin. Staph aureus typically presents with acute endocarditis. And staph aureus endocarditis can occur on previously damaged valves, as well as in the absence of any pre-existing heart valve abnormalities. Other microorganisms that can have an acute presentation include group A streptococci, strep pneumoniae, and Neisseria gonorrhea. It is important to note that some presentations of infective endocarditis can overlap between subacute and acute presentations. Healthcare-associated infective endocarditis is a new form of infective endocarditis that has emerged in the setting of interventions that are increasingly being used to treat patients. These interventions usually involve a long-term intravascular catheter, procedures, and frequent contact with the healthcare environment. Healthcare-associated infective endocarditis can be seen in the setting of hemodialysis, total parental nutrition, cardiac devices such as pacemakers, or illnesses requiring a long-term intravascular catheter. Healthcare-associated endocarditis is often due to staphylococci, such as staph aureus and coagulase negative staph, since these microorganisms often colonize human skin and can be introduced into the bloodstream through intravascular catheters. Other offenders can be enterococci, streptococci, and fungi. It is important to remember that with each of the potential microbial etiologies for endocarditis, the most common listed here, there's overlap between subacute and acute infective endocarditis. Factors that can predispose patients to developing infective endocarditis can be categorized into structural heart abnormalities as well as external factors. Structural heart abnormalities include mitral valve abnormalities that occur with rheumatic heart disease, defects that occur with congenital heart disease, such as those listed here on the slide, mitral valve prolapse, which is often seen in women, and finally, degenerative cardiac lesions, such as calcific lesions found with atherosclerosis, as seen in the elderly. External conditions predisposed to infective endocarditis by providing a means for transient bacteremia. These include hemodialysis, long-term intravascular catheters, cardiac pacemakers, and intravenous drug use.